Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting an ultramarine to a high standard. But first of all I want to thank my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming. If you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to their web store and this link greatly helps my YouTube channel anytime you purchase anything from Goblin Gaming so please use that link in the description box below. Okay guys, I braved my laughter for about three or four hours in the freezing cold to try and paint this Space Marine up to a relatively high standard for a tutorial. I do get asked a lot, can you show me a more of a high-end uh, paint job as opposed to a tabletop version? So I tried to do that on this miniature. So hopefully you'll really enjoy this miniature and for suffering for three or four hours in the freezing cold in my loft, please hit the like button guys. I'm finding that some of my tutorials are getting low numbers at the moment, so share it amongst friends and hit that like button, it really helps generate more interest in my videos. As always guys, this is going to be a long video, so please go grab yourselves a nice hot drink or maybe a nice ice cold beer and we'll get started with the tutorial. I start off by priming using Alclad 2's white primer. Now it's important to note guys, the reason I use the Alclad primer is because it goes on super smooth and is very very thin. Things to take note of guys is that because it's a lack of primer it's really harmful if inhaled so please make sure you're well ventilated and wearing a mask. Also, it's important that you're using a quality airbrush that has PTFE solvent proof packing seals as the lacquer primer can damage cheaper airbrushes. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreon supporters. It really means a lot to me guys. And if you really enjoy my tutorials guys and you've been watching for a long time and you want to support me more than hitting the like button, head on over to my Patreon page and pledge your support from as little as $1. We're going to start off by base coating the miniature using Vallejo Game Air Imperial Blue. The lack of primer cures really quickly. I left it for a few hours and then I'm coming in with the Imperial Blue. Here I'm making sure that I've got a really nice even smooth base coat throughout the whole of the miniature. As the term states, this is a base coat and because it's a base coat, it's really important that you get a smooth, even coverage throughout the whole of the miniature. You'll find that this is the foundation for all the paint that's subsequently going to be placed over the miniature. So if the paint work is patchy on the base coat, you'll tend to find that subsequent layers will look patchy as well. So make sure you take your time to look all throughout the miniature as you're base coating and make sure that it's all even. Now we're going to place some highlights down using Vallejo Game Air Ultramarine Blue. So now I'm highlighting the Ultramarine and I'm coming in with my trusty Awata Eclipse CS Airbrush. Now I highly recommend this airbrush guys if you're a beginner airbrusher or even an intermediate or even an expert at airbrushing as it works well for pretty much all tasks. I use it for varnishing, for base coating, and here you can see that I'm using it for fine detail work as well. If you check the description box below, I'll put a direct link to graphicair.co.uk where you can pick up the Awata Eclipse for a really decent price. As you can see, I'm concentrating on all of the raised surfaces of the Space Marine, and I'm trying to leave the Imperial blue behind in all of the recesses. I'm also leaving the imperial blue behind on the extreme inner legs 
of the space marine and some of the outer parts of the leg this is for cool effect as opposed to uh, what it would really look like with light reflecting so sometimes painting you can actually add drama and you can make things look a little unrealistic as long as the overall look is that it looks good I have to add that I'm working at 20 psi and here you can see I'm working at about an inch away from the miniature it's important that your psi is quite low if it's too high you'll find that you'll get splash marks on the miniature which you don't want Now we're going to add some even more extreme highlights using Vallejo Game Air Electric Blue. Here I'm focusing on the very top third of the Space Marine mainly and I'm just hitting the top of the backpack here as you can see and I'll shortly start hitting the very tops of the shoulder pauldrons and helmet as well and you'll start to see that the colour's really going to start to pop now. Now I'm focusing on his right arm and I'm trying to work on a section at a time and on the legs here I'm just spraying down the centres of the legs and leaving the other colours behind on the insides of the legs and the outside. Now we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing using Games Workshop's Edge Paint Bar Roth Blue. Now it's important to note that I've literally removed all of the paint on some paper towel from the brush. You literally want to remove paint to such a point where you're not seeing any more paint coming off onto the paper towel. Then you know that you're ready to dry brush and I'm doing it very gently here indeed guys there's a lot of open um, panels on the Space Marine and I try to avoid those and just catch the edges of the sharp panels of the armour
Now we're going to gloss varnish the miniature. Now this is going to do two things for us guys. One, it's going to protect the delicate paintwork on the miniature. And two, it's going to enable us to do some pin washing using Games Workshop's gloss null oil and also enable us to put the decals down on the miniature without creating what's known as silvering. Decals really don't want to go down on round surfaces on miniatures. But to help this, the gloss varnish really helps flatten down the decals. I also use a setting solution known as Microset from Microscale Industries. I'm using non oil gloss guys as this will work with the gloss coat that we've just laid down through the airbrush it will go into all the recesses really easily using the natural capillary action of the brush You'll see here I'm a little bit messy but I'm not that worried about it as I can al always moisten the brush with some water and clean up the spills because it's gloss varnished. It takes a little while for it to dry. But if you're more careful than me you'll get an even nicer end result. Here I'm placing a decal down on the shoulder pauldron and I'm dipping my brush into Microset from Microscale Industries. This is an absolutely fantastic solution to help flatten down the decals on the surface. So in conjunction with the gloss varnish and the setting solution from Micros Microscale Industries, we're really able to flatten out the decal. After letting the decal dry for about 20 to 25 minutes with the microset placed on the decal, I'm then coming in with a very soft bristle brush to just make sure that all of the excess microset is wicked off and I'm completely flattening out the decal.
Now it's time to get rid of that horrid looking gloss varnish. I'm using AK Interactive's Ultra Matte Varnish. Now you could use satin varnish or matte varnish, but I really like the look of an ultra matte finish on my Space Marines. So here it's preference on what varnish you prefer to use. Now we're going to create some chips on the decals to make them look even more authentic and realistic. It's important that your sponge is really uneven guys and it's you pull it apart with your fingers to create different textures in the sponge. It's also important that you remove most of the paint off the sponge so you only get very very fine little chips. You want them to be really tiny so they look in scale with a Space Marine. I'm going to be using Vallejo's Liquid Gold, Old Gold, and their brush cleaner is essential to cleaning your brushes. If you don't have Vallejo brush cleaner, you can use regular isopropanol and you can, or rubbing alcohol as it's known, but you cannot get this paint out of your brushes with water alone. You need a special solution like rubbing alcohol or the brush cleaner that I've got from Vallejo. All of the silver metallics are going to be base coated using Vallejo Game Air Chainmail Silver.
Normally when I'm speed painting, I would just paint the whole gun using chainmail silver. But here I'm taking my time to paint really slowly and just catch all the areas that I want to be metallic. Here I'm using Games Workshop's Mephisto and Red to paint some of the casing of the gun. Again, I roll the bristles of the brush into a nice fine point and I take my time to make sure that I'm not getting any of that Mephisto and Red on the metallic areas that I've already painted. After the Mephisto and Red had thoroughly dried, I'm coming in with Games Workshop shade Carabool Crimson and I'm washing all over the casing of the gun. I create a highlight using 50-50 Wild Rider Red and Mephisto Red. So that's one drop of Mephisto Red to one drop of Wild Rider Red. Here I'm, I've thinned the paint down as well, one to one with water, and I'm working on the extreme edges of the casing and leaving 
the Carabao Crimson Mephiston Red finish in all the extreme recesses. Now we're going to use a technique called hard edge highlighting. I'm using Games Workshop's edge paint bar half blue and I roll the bristles into a really sharp point and I look for the natural sharp angle of the power armor that I want to highlight and I run the side of the bristles along those areas. Take great care and take your time whilst highlighting guys. You want the lines to be as straight, thin and smooth as possible. So make sure that you're taking your time and you'll start to see some really nice highlights popping out from the miniature. All of the silver metallics are going to get washed with the Army Painter's Dark Tone. Now the Dark Tone is very very similar to Games Workshop's Null Nile, but the benefit of this over Games Workshop's Null Nile is it's in a handy dropper bottle so you won't be spilling it like Null Nile. And also you get more paint for your money. Here you can see that I've rolled the bristles of the brush into an ultra fine point and I'm making tiny little minute scratches on the power armour. It's really important that the scratches are super tiny guys because they have to be in scale with the fact that it's a tiny 38mm miniature. Here I'm creating a line using Barath Blue just under each one of those black lines to create a 3D effect to the scratch. All of the gold areas are painted over using Games Workshop's Argrax Earthshade Gloss. It's important to use the gloss variety as we want to keep all the sheen of the metallics. The purity seals that are on the Space Marine are base coated using Games Workshop Zandri Dust 
after the Zandrodrus had dried, I come back in with a Shabti bone and then a final wash of Seraphim Sepia. Now I'm going to create hard edge highlights using Vallejo Game Air Silver. Now Vallejo Game Air Silver is a really really bright colour so it's important that you try to keep these hard edge highlights as thin and small as possible. Also if there's any tiny little bolts and those sorts of things on the gun I'm picking those out with the silver as well just to create even more interest on the gun. Games Workshop's Morn Frank Brown is painted on all of the pouches on the Space Marine. Make a mix of 50-50, that's one drop of XV88 to one drop of Mornfang Brown so we can start highlighting the pouches. Once I've finished highlighting the pouches, I then come back in with Zandri Dust and just hard edge highlight all of the pouches.
and here we have our finished ultramarine now i absolutely love the primaris guys i know they have some of the detractors out there but i think they look absolutely fantastic they're full of loads of intricate details that you can pick out like i forgot to film myself painting the little uh, lenses on the backs of the legs where i used mute green and also flash gets yellow to highlight them i think he's also got some lenses on his arm as well uh, but anyway guys really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did guys please hit the like button let's see if we can get this video up to 200 likes i doubt we'll make that achievement but you never know also i want you to check out the link in the description box below for goblin gaming guys please go check out their web store there are brilliant bunch of guys and their web store is absolutely fantastic okay uh so lastly guys thank you very much for watching this video and i'll catch you in the next one